Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to turn these two Twixter clips here into what I made in my flow edit, which was this. So first we're going to actually start off with getting um, the, fl the one frame is done. Um, you have to make sure your clip is completely twixted first, like nothing else, you have to get uh, your clip twixted. And for one framers I actually used um, three effects, which was uh, four, uh, Ignite, Pixel Sorter, Levels, Hue Sat Bright, um, I did use some blur directional as well, but I did also use an overlay which I forgot to download so I'm actually going to show you uh, where my overlays would be. Um, I have an overlay pack in my Discord, if you check out my Discord uh, it will be in overlay section. Uh, it, will be, it will be on a Google Drive as well, so we'll go in on there when it decides not to lag. And there's a bunch of different overlays but I have uh, glitch overlays that I used. So I'm just going to scroll down till I find it. It was somewhere in here. Here it was. I used this uh, overlay as a one framer. And then if you scroll more there is also that school overlay that I used in my uh, edit if you want to use that as well. Which I might grab that. That's all the way at the bottom. There's also the mouth overlay as well if you wanted that. Scroll down, school overlay right here. Just wait for that to download. Okay, there we go. So we've got both of our overlays. So first we're just, just going to cut up our one framers. So, S to cut. You want to go three one framers and then two at the end. Same with this one, three one framers two at the end. So it's like five one frames each. And first I'm just gonna make sure I have the overlays in my project. So downloads. There we go. Now this overlay I put it on top. Right? But we're not gonna oh God, I'm not gonna do that just yet. There we go. We are gonna Go to levels to make everything like one one frame a dark. Go levels. Just do it however much you want. I usually do it about that much. And then we're gonna go to ignite pixel sort. There is also S pigment pi X little sapphire pixel sort. However, you don't have much options, and it just looks a lot more different than it's. Than it does on like this one. It looks a lot better on this one. So uh, I want it to be 90 degrees because it's he's going towards this way. So I want it to be this way. And then we're going to do. We control the amount. So I want it the first one to be quite strong. I think. And then we're gonna go to second one and do uh, brightness with a hue hue sap bright there we go and then just up the brightness not by a lot now that I think about it and then I'm going to add my glitch on top I just made it disappear my bad there we go and then uh, put it as not multiply, I think add. Can't remember which one I put it as. I mean, you can put it as any, really, whatever you think is uh, suitable. That could work. And then I might lower the brightness just a bit. So I'm actually going to co copy this glitch overlay just over a couple of them, not the ones I'm going to put pixel sort over, like this. And then I'm going to copy the pixel sort one over to some of them, not all of them. It'll be that one, that one, and that one. 
You can see this one isn't affected much, so I have to adjust it. Like that. Maybe add shorter pixel sort here. And you can also add stuff like um, halftone, like BCC halftone. There. And then. I actually kind of forgot how to. Oh, there we go. That's fine. And then I also added flicker to the actual clip. So I'm gonna add flicker. I have like a setting for it. You can copy it here if you want to. And I'm gonna graph it. Uh, like this. Animate the amplitude and apply that and then add that on both of the clips. Okay, we need one for this one. That one I might do uh, S invert. Because then here you can just change down the saturation. go maybe even add some pixel sort as well so pixel sort is very useful for these kind of glitches and I I like this one but I don't think I would use it for this I think I'll just use the pixel sort because that just, you know, oh, that's that's a lot. It looks good. I'm gonna lower this, that's too much. There we go. So this is how I originally did the glitch in my audio. My audio? My video. So I'm just gonna render this real quick. Oh, and if you download the Ignite plugin and you get this uh, notification whenever you use it, just ignore it. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so Toto, make sure your render settings are the same as your project settings. Mine was 25 FPS. Okay, that's already. There we go. Wait for that. Shouldn't take long. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that was the first step. Now we add the rendered version. And we have our clips. So I'm just going to cut back to what I need. I'm just going to double check exactly what I did because I honestly can't remember. Okay, so first it was the edgy shakes or flow shakes. I already have tutorials on that. One was called the impact shake. If you look in my playlists on my channel, I've organized everything. So if you probably look at the flow playlist or shake playlist, I think there's one. Um, just look there. Okay. So I'm going to go S shake. I, again, I have these settings in a tutorial. I'm using the exact same settings. So I'm not doing anything different. I'm just doing different values. So I'm going to put, put this as 0 0.6. Set it down. And then I'm going to use that kind of graph. Just see how that looks. That looks fine. And then I'm also going to add it on this clip. Or did I? I don't think I did. I can't actually tell if I did. I'm not going to add it for now, but if just in case if I did. And then I added a second shake, which was like the uh, very hard shake. So not the bouncy shape, kind of the twitch shake. So we're going to add that. Uh, we'll start it off by going 0.5 and turn up the blur a bit. So this one's a very heavy shake, you can see. So I need a stronger graph. 
but I want it to still be seen at the beginning but end quite quickly so I'm going to do it like that. Yeah that looks good and I'm just going to copy and paste it onto the next clip and take off this shake. So see how that looks. Cool. And now what I actually do remember doing is zooming in to the eye with pan and crop um, on this eye clip. So I'm going to do that. So I, I, did, I think I did that graph. And I'm just going to go all the way to the end, I'm just going to do it before for now, and then zoom in to his eye, which is here. And then do a quick graph here, there we go. Yep. And now the last thing you end up seeing is the warps. So I did two warps, I used the jug warp that I've made a tutorial on. In, I think I did both of them. Well, I know I did it in the second one, so I'm going to do it in the second one for now. So we're going to go to a warp bubble. Uh, oh, I don't actually have the. I don't have the bloody <laughs> settings. Okay, um, I'm just going to get the settings. I'm just going to get that back. There we go. That was my fault. I did it's because I made the edit on my laptop and not on my PC. So anyway, warp bubble. Uh, I'm gonna use jug warp. Which one did I use? We're just gonna flick through each one, see which one I use. I'm gonna use three for now. Higher the values. So if I just leave it unanimated, it just looks like this, like very wobbly and you know, out of control. But we animate the amplitude. And I want it fast. See, I don't want it too fast, but I don't want it too slow, so I kind of want it in the middle until I get something I like. So I'm just going to leave that for now. No. Maybe. Like this. Okay, no, there wasn't much there, so I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, now we're going to add the last thing that I added, which was warp puddle. Let's warp puddle. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah, I have some weird settings saved at the moment, but these are the settings I used. Um, you have to use a higher frequency, like this, uh, amplitude, and then you animate the amplitude. I think I'm pretty sure you leave the frequency alone, but I could be wrong. I kind of forgot. So we're just gonna. Yeah, no, I think we animate the frequency. And I'm also gonna animate the speed. So I'm gonna make it go from 2 to 0.5. And now we just kind of need to see where we want it to start. So we want it, we want you to be able to see it at the beginning, but then end quite quickly. There we go. See how this looks. Amplitude, frequency. Oh, did I not animate? Okay, animate the frequency. And then the speed, which I might speed up a bit. There we go. And then if we add it behind.
And then I did also add a jug warp as well to this, I do remember. Warp, bubble, the jug warp one. Higher the amplitude. Yeah, that, that looks like the right one I used. Okay, I think I did too much warp puddle here, so I'm just gonna make the amplitude go a bit faster. There we go. I mean, now it's too fast. <laughs> So it's really it's really about just getting that right graph that looks right and values so now yeah that, that looks fairly okay for redoing it without any like memory of how I did it um, and that's how you do it what I did uh, I will also make a tutorial on the uh, overlay transition where it like goes to the right and then to the left with the one framers uh so yeah i hope you look forward to seeing that thank you for watching bye